Hi there, I'm Jake and joined with Philip and we're going to give you a quick walkthrough on Journalytic to help you get onboarded and hit the ground running. So Philip, why don't you take it away? Awesome. Yeah, the key thing with Journalytic is using the dollar symbol to tag whatever company you're researching. Let's say you're re reading Apple's 10K and you want to drop some notes in your journal. Also have the ability to create custom ticker symbols. So using the dollar symbol, you can create a custom idea. It could be a private business opportunity, venture capital. You can select the asset type. We have some real estate folks using it as well. You can give it a name. I always wanted to own, own Chick-fil-A. Yeah, well, let's just call this private equity. Drop that ticker symbol right in your journal. You can journal about that. Also have the ability to create tags. So let's say you're journaling about corporate governance and you want to always track that topic. So you can include that, add that right to your journal. Some other ones we've been using are anti-fragile. Jake, you wanna share how you've been using green flag and red flag in your process? Yeah, as I go through notes, uh, I will attach a green flag or a red flag to a particular piece of content. And then that way it helps me to just visually see a green or a red as, as something that's good or bad that's happening with inside of, of a company. Once you post your journal entry, you can see a title row view right here. Helpful to go back and scan all your entries in recent months, give you a high level view of what you've been journaling about. Once you create a symbol for the first time, you can click on that symbol in your journal and it'll take you to a dashboard view. So let's click on Apple and you'll see a price chart with all your journal entries overlaid. Click on the five-year view, see what you're writing about Apple back in the pandemic. What were your thoughts in 2020? Jake, how has this been helpful for your process using this chart? Uh, it's just amazing to see how my thoughts have morphed over time as, and, and oftentimes how much price can be driving how I'm feeling about a particular investment, which is always good to know. We have multiple views of the chart. You can click on decisions, see when you've been buying or selling. We'll show you how to use that feature shortly. You can also click on the idea dashboard here. This will take you to a more detailed view related to Apple. You can put status of where you are in your process. Is it in research? Maybe you pass on the company, create custom statuses as well. Also tracking source we think is important for the investment process. So picking um, where you found out about the idea and then you can start to track where your best returns are coming from. Also have idea alerts up here. You can set an idea alert, but maybe you want to remind yourself about this company in a couple months or maybe after a certain time period of no journal entries. Going back to the home journal, you can do the same thing with tagging. So we created that tag corporate governance, and I'll show you how you can click on that. Clicking on corporate governance, it'll take you to a filtered view of every entry that has this. You can also add some notes, maybe how you're using that tag in your process. Um, Journalytic has journal actions to help add more structure to your process. So one that we'll show you is capturing a decision. You can click record decision from clicking the plus action button. Um, record multiple decision types, pie and sell, we're all doing in our process. We're trying to encourage people to record some of the decisions maybe they're doing in their head, a past decision or a hold. So. Let's just record a past decision for Apple. Maybe it's too expensive. Jake, you want to share about reason codes and how these help your process? Yeah, it's really important to see how every time that you record for a particular code, what that group then goes on to do to see actually what is the opportunity cost of your filtration systems. So you always hear Buffett talking about his biggest sins have been sins of omission, things that he's missed and not sins of commission, mistakes that he's made. So, and, and those sins of omission do not show up anywhere in Berkshire's financials, but they're, they're obviously important. So the more that we can track them and keep, and keep our eye on it, the better chance we will to not make the same mistakes over and over again. Absolutely. So once you record that decision, you can post it into your journal. You come up here to the actions tab and you'll see all of your decisions recorded over time. So today we passed on Apple at $100 per share. The current price is $135. Starting to measure some of that opportunity cost, like Jake said. So you can filter by decision type, help to look back over previous years. Maybe you passed on a certain company and it's gone on to do very well, or maybe it's gone on to do very poorly. Sometimes we rewrite history of what we were thinking a few years ago. So it's helpful to go back and review. Next feature we'll show you is checklists. So you can use the plus action button, click run checklist here, but I'm gonna show you our full library of over 300 questions. So um, you can come here, select your own, um, some of Buffett's question, Munger, capital allocation, different topics, helpful to create your own repeatable process. So by clicking new checklist here, you can create your own, and then you can come back to the journal and click run checklist. Jake, how have checklists been useful for you in your process? Well, you know, they're really about slowing you down so that you engage that system two thinking that Danny Kahneman would call it, um, and not that quick system one kind of gut feelings. So um, anytime you can slow yourself down a, with a little bit of, of creative friction, you, you stand a better chance of making a sober decision. Um, I would say that for newer investors, that if you went through our checklist that we've built and really kind of thought to like work through to understand them, there's an MBA class in that, or like an entire MBA in that checklist section. There's a ton of learning to be done there. So I would encourage you if you're a newer investor to, to explore that. All right, another feature we will show you is called self-contracts. By clicking the plus action button, you can embed a self-contract into your journal. You can pick a date out, let's call it the end of 2023. Um, these are designed to help you control your future behavior. So let's just say, if management does one more bad acquisition, I'll sell my shares. Or if Apple gets to a PE ratio of 15, I'll buy a 2% starter position. Um, Andy Duke has written about these, just trying to help us as investors 
um, control our behavior in the future and our emotions can sometimes prevent us from doing what we, we should be doing. So Jake, how have you found these useful for your process? Yeah, Andy Duke has a really lovely framing of this self-contract idea, which she calls kill criteria. And the idea behind that is that every big decision that you make, if you have the ability to undo it, you should identify ahead of time what were the preconditions that would happen that would make you decide to change your mind. And so in an investment context, you could decide to buy something and then decide, okay, if these things happen, those are deal breakers for me, I'm going to sell. Or if I got to this certain valuation, I'm going to sell. And setting that up ahead of time before you're in the heat of the moment and, and then executing on your best intentions. All right, next feature we'll get into is called making a prediction. This was inspired by Phil Tetlock and his work around super forecasters. The key trait of a super forecaster is thinking probabilistically. And so let's pick a date at the end of this year. I expect Apple's revenue to increase by 10% over the next 12 months. Key thing is assigning a probability of what you think that will actually happen, writing out why you think it'll happen. And then in journal, it could be notified when the prediction expires. And it's really helpful to close that feedback loop to go back and reflect and see what you were thinking, discover if you were right or wrong, maybe you're overconfident helpful to get properly calibrated in future predictions. So Jake, any examples you'd like to share for predictions in your process? Well, yeah, Daniel Kahneman says that the number one bias that trips up most people is overconfidence. And where that can manifest itself is you think that, you know, you assign, let's say in this case, a 90% probability. Well, that should happen nine out of 10 times then. And if it's only happening five out of 10 times in that, that particular type of uh, prediction that you're making, then you're not properly calibrated. And you need to know that about yourself. And hopefully it keeps you from making some huge mistake because you're overconfident. All right, next feature we'll get into is called capturing a feeling. So as investors, um, we experience different emotions in the investment process. It could be related to a specific company. Let's say Google's earnings came out today, ad revenue was down significantly, you're not feeling great. Really helpful to just journal about that and capture that on a scale of one to 10, while you're feeling a certain way, writing out a couple sentences, you can post that right into your journal. It's also helpful is if you click on Google, that feeling will be overlaid on that price chart we showed earlier. So you can click on the all actions view and you'll see that price recorded right here. So start to discover if price is driving your feelings a little bit more than you're aware. Um, as investors, sometimes price action can affect us and we're not realizing it. You can also capture feelings around other things besides specific companies. Maybe it's the economy, how you're feeling about market valuations, even mental physical states important. Jake, do you want to speak to that of how important it is to track mental and physical state? Yeah, the classic example of this would be George Soros, and he supposedly would sell everything when he had a certain back pain. And there was some signal in this, you know, whenever he'd feel like his back was hurting, that, you know, something was wrong and he needed to liquidate his portfolio. I'm not sure we're advising to be that extreme with it, but I do think that there's a lot of information within how we're feeling that we could be capturing to discover if there is signal in that noise. And uh, I think hopefully this is our first implementation of this, but it's going to keep getting better. Awesome. Uh, we have the ability to add reminders. You could be journaling about something and you want to come back and reflect on that. This key aspect of journaling is the reflection. So you can drop a reminder right into your journal. Let's say in three months, I want to come back and revisit what I was writing. Maybe it's something related to a specific company or management. You want to go back and see what they said if they actually followed through on it. So you can drop that reminder. It'll be right at the top of your journal. Also another feature is linking entries together using the at symbol. You can link to prior entries. So maybe you're writing about Buffett buying Oxygen last year and he's bought some more and you want to update your thoughts on that. So you can click on the previous entry and we'll embed it right in your journal. Jake, any thoughts on linking or reminders you'd like to share from your process? Well, I use the reminders all the time and it's just, it's so easy for things to fall through the cracks if you don't have that set. And it, you know, we can, you can put a, a reminder in, in like two seconds and then it'll serve it back up to you later when it expires. And it's just, it's so useful. Um, even though it's kind of a small thing. Uh, yeah. In the little uh, bell icon there. And then linking journal entries is really helpful in that it more resembles how our brains are actually wired. Like it's a series of connections between ideas and uh, this allows you to create structure within your journal that connects ideas and concepts along with tagging uh, that that will allow things to emerge that you might have not been able to put connect dots earlier. And then the last thing you can add from our plus action menu is inserting photos, could be screenshots from an SEC filing or maybe something, a chart that you'd like to drop in or Excel spreadsheets, PDFs. Those are also available if you'd like to tag them to a specific company and use Journalytic as a repository. Over time, your ideas and tags will build. So we added a sidebar so you can see all of your tags. You can bookmark them, clicking by all tags. You come to a full list. You can archive them, edit them, change the color. So here's some example tags from our account. Same with all your ideas. You can click on all ideas. You'll see a full list of all of them here. Jake, has sidebar been useful in any way for your process you'd like to share of managing journal entries, ideas, and tags? Definitely. I mean, just for quick reference to be able to you know, click between ideas that are kind of like in your working inventory, like ideas you're actively working on can live there. Um, journal entries that maybe you you want to keep in sort of a working inventory as well can can be embedded there. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely, it's kind of a nice, almost scratch pad-ish sometimes in the way that you can use it. As your journal history builds, we built a powerful search engine. So you can search for specific companies. Maybe you want to search every time you've mentioned Apple and Buffett together in a journal entry. So you can search multiple terms. 
And you'd see in this Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting notes that both of those were mentioned. So search can be powerful. Up here is our ideas tab. Here's a full list of every company you've journaled about. You'll see all of your stat the status and then the source is all visible here. So Jake, is any anything to share on the ideas view and how this has been useful? Yeah, it's just a good place to, to have a quick reference guide to all of your ideas and to assign that status and that source. Um, just uh, It's nice to just be able to see them in one quick view. Also have the actions tab up here. You'll see all the decisions that we showed earlier. You'll see your contracts, predictions, those feelings here, here as well as your journal. And lastly, we built a dashboard to give you some insights to look back over the previous 12 months. A key part of journaling is the reflection component. So you can quickly scan back, see what you're writing about during different months. So Jake, any thoughts on heat map or this dashboard for your process? Yeah, both the heat map and the activity monitor are hugely valuable for to be able to go back and review what I was working on at different time periods and to, and more generally to see the body of work of how much time and effort have I been putting into my investment process. Exactly right. So over the previous year, you can start to see the, the efforts of all your hard work. You know, the most important thing is focus on your process and that's what you can control. Outcomes are out of our control. So the more you can be putting in work here, putting in daily reps, focusing on writing and reflection and um, ultimately good results will come with that over time. So also some time tracking here, just to see different days of the week where you've been spending time and your research. A lot more coming here in the coming months um, as we build this. So any more thoughts on the dashboard, Jake? Yeah, more generally, this dashboard represents everything that I wanted to know about my own investment process that I currently wasn't, or I wasn't previously keeping track of. And now it's super easy to keep track of because I just do my work in Journalytic and this all gets accumulated in here and measured and provided to me. That's right. Yeah, putting the work in the front end and then analytics on the back end to give you some insights into your process. So um, that's our early demo of Journalytic. Any final thoughts before we wrap up, Jake? No, hopefully this was a good uh, way for you to hit the ground running and start to get a sense of what Journalytic might be able to do for you and uh, to take your investment process to the next level. And we look forward to hearing back from you uh, what, what works for you, what doesn't, and what else we might be able to build that you would find really valuable. Before we go, I will show everyone in the help center or in the account menu, we have a help center here. Feel free to click that. We have some great videos, tutorials, articles in there, some stuff from the community that people have shared. All the creative ways they're using the product. There's a lot of flexibility we built in. So we're trying to make this where it can fit for your unique investment process. Also have the ability to leave feedback. Feel free to drop in if there's any issues you're facing. We'd love to learn what you'd like to see as we continue to build the product this year. So thanks for your time and thanks for joining us for this short demo. Enjoy.